Let's look now at how to handle tantrums that occur outside of the home. Children learn quickly to generalize their behavior. What brings attention in one place can frequently be counted on to bring attention in another. Tantruming, being as dramatic as it is, is a number one attention getter in almost any setting. A question that parents often ask me is, how do I deal with a child who tantrums at church or at the supermarket or at the home of family and friends? To begin, I advise them against taking a child to any of these places if it is likely that he will throw a tantrum. Remember, it's a tough behavior to ignore, and if it is reinforced elsewhere, it will be just that much more difficult to get rid of at home or anywhere. Rather, I would wait until his tantruming behavior has been eliminated at home, and you have good assurance that he won't tantrum elsewhere. I realize that when making this suggestion, it could complicate one's life and even be unfair to others. Nevertheless, if the strategies that I've described earlier are used effectively, even if it takes a week or two to get rid of the tantruming behavior, it is well worth the sacrifice and inconvenience and even lack of fairness that it might cause, and it will certainly be in the best interest of the child. Let's suppose, though, that the child does have a tantrum in another setting. For example, the child tantrums when he is dropped off at the babysitter's or preschool. In a situation like this, where parents don't have time to try and quiet the child down or to take the child back home to time out, the single best thing to do is to just ignore the tantrum and walk away and go on with your business. The sitter or preschool people should be instructed that they should pay no attention to the tantruming behavior, but should leave the child alone, preferably off by himself, and go on about their business until the child quits. If possible, it might be well to establish a timeout area in that new setting. When the child has quit tantruming, then he should be allowed to participate with the others so long as he behaves appropriately. Again, make certain that when he is behaving appropriately, this behavior is acknowledged and properly rewarded. I've seen parents drop a child off at the babysitter's or at preschool. The child begins to tantrum. The parents go through an agonizing ritual of trying to calm him down. This wastes time. It reinforces the very behavior they want to get rid of, and it generally starts the day off on a sour note for everyone. They're better off just dropping the child off and leaving. If a child tantrums at a supermarket, at church, at the home of family or friends, immediately remove him and, if possible, take him home. I realize that there are any number of reasons why this might not be possible. You're a long way from home. You don't have transportation available and so on. But whatever, remove him to a non-reinforcing setting as quickly as you can. Think this all through carefully in advance and know what your options are if a tantrum should happen away from home. Ask yourself, what will I do if? Think of it as intensive care. If a person is seriously ill, it may be necessary to dramatically alter that person's environment long enough for him to get better. In a hospital setting, it's called intensive care. If a child has a difficult-to-manage behavior like tantruming, it might be necessary to establish an intensive care arrangement, realizing that such an arrangement, if well-managed, will be needed only for a short time. I can assure you that if the tantruming behavior is handled well at home and eliminated there, and the child learns that he can't go places if he tantrums, he will have learned a new behavior. Furthermore, if he is properly given attention for appropriate behavior when not tantruming, he will not feel the need to tantrum. It is worth the effort.